Have you ever been to a sushi restaurant where the food comes along on a conveyor belt? And have you ever wondered how the conveyor belt can go around corners? Well, there are various off-the-shelf solutions for conveyor belts that can go around corners that are used in packaging and automation and things like that. This is some video from Dorna Conveyors which shows how to assemble the conveyor belt and as you can see there are some bearings on the end of each track link and those fit into a groove which guides it along whether it's going straight or it's going around the corner. The track is driven by a sprocket just like a tank and there's an idler at the other end and that seems to run smoothly the entire course of the conveyor. I recently made an omnidirectional tank that can move in any direction, but could we make a tank which has a single track which bends to steer? Just a quick ad from my 3D printing sponsor, thanks to Lolzbot for supporting my channel with 3D printers. And thanks to 3D Fuel for the filament for this project, all of these parts are printed in Pro PLA+. I'm using some steel rods to make the pivots in between each piece of track there, so those are just threaded through the middle there, and those can pivot. And what I've done with the pivots here is that those are kind of a V shape essentially, with a taper point in the middle, and that should mean as the track bends that it keeps a constant length, rather than just being completely loose, they're constrained in the middle. There's also quite a lot of stretch in this because those axles are actually quite bendy. This is some cheap steel I get from an educational supplier. It does deform very easily though, so for this project I'm going to upgrade to some 3mm diameter stainless steel rods. With those cut to the right length we have something that feels a lot better and the stainless steel is a lot tougher basically, so there's a little bit of bend in them, but it's much much stronger and it's not going to deform permanently if I stretch it. We need a sprocket to drive that, so I've got this sprocket that fits into the gaps in the track and those should wrap round perfectly and fit onto the teeth of the sprocket so we can drive the chain. That sprocket fits into the middle of a wheel and I've made that in three pieces so that I can change the sprocket and change the tooth spacing or size if it doesn't run well in the future without having to reprint the whole thing, which is quite a good way of designing things. Each side is just screwed on with three screws that are recessed into the pieces there and that means I can change the sprocket really easily if I need to. In one of the side pieces I've got a bearing there and on the other side I've got a hole and there's also a grub screw and a captive nut. I recently built another tank project which was the Omni tank that can move in any direction with omnidirectional tank treads just like Omni wheels but a tank. But the motors I put in here were a little bit underpowered feeling so for this project I'm going to use quite a more substantial motor which is a big motor with a big gear head on it. On that motor is a 3D printed collar which is going to slide all the way down onto the body of the motor almost all the way to the back and that collar fits perfectly inside the bearing in my wheel and that means I can put the motor right inside the wheel. The actual output shaft of the gear head on the motor is fitted into the hole on the other end of the wheel and held in place with the captive nut and the grub screw. So this is quite a handy hint if you've got nowhere else to put the motor and a drivetrain with a belt driver or gear drive because now the motor is inside the wheel and perfectly balanced across it. And that motor and wheel is held between two pieces, one has a bearing for the smaller end of the wheel to fit in there, and the other end has basically a clamp which is going to hold the motor body instead of my hand. These parts are a bit special though, so I've got lots of little bearings with a little 3D printed cap attached to them, and all of these fit onto those parts. Thanks to Simply Bearings for the bearings for this project, check out simplybearings.co.uk. So there's a bunch of those fitted at 90 degrees to each other on each side and I have put a washer on the inside there to space them out so they don't rub on the plastic. So we now have this unit which represents one end of the tank and that has the motor fitted inside the wheel there so we've got our powered sprocket fitted between two of these pieces and we've got all of these bearings in there which are going to serve as aligners for the track. The other end is very similar, only we've got this passive wheel which doesn't have a motor in, we're just going to drive the whole thing at one end. And you'll also notice it doesn't have the sprocket, although I've left a blanking plate there so I can put a sprocket in if I need to. But for now, that's just going to fit in between two bearings so it can idle as the other end of the track is driven by the motor. So that just pops straight in there. And I think this idler will run in the track just fine without the sprocket, it should run in the track held in with the two edges which I thought to print into the track parts. So what we've got is two ends to this thing, one is active with the motor in, the other one is passive so it just spins round, 
And then we've got these sets of bearings here, and the idea is that these two pieces are going to bend in the middle, and the bearings, hopefully, are going to go and align the track, so by the time it gets to the sprocket and the other idler here, it's straight, and it doesn't come off the idler, so there's a little bit of straight section, and then basically the bend is in the middle. So now we need a way of bending these together that gives us a nice smooth curve in the track. So I'm going for two partial gears which rotate against each other and you'll notice there's bearings in those which are top and bottom and that means we've actually got two pivot points spaced away from each other instead of just having one hinge in the middle. I fitted these bars and I've got 8mm bolts with lock nuts on the bottom there so that holds the whole thing together and keeps the two gears aligned. So now when I put the track on we get multiple bend points mainly where those two bearings are which allows that track to bend smoothly instead of there just being one pivot point in the middle. But before we see how well that works it's time for a quick ad from the video's sponsor which is Fan Home. Fan Home's mission is to inspire fans with high quality build up models and collections from your favourite entertainment, gaming and pop culture brands. All the products are original designs you won't find elsewhere. Each shipment includes fully illustrated magazines full of inspiring content and packed with information. Just choose your collection or build up model and every month you'll receive exclusive products along with their magazine. Fan Home's Marvel Superheroes and Villains is an incredible 1 16th scale collection of all the characters you love from the Marvel Cinematic Universe. The figurines have been produced with painstaking detail, created digitally by experts and then cast in metallic resin and hand painted. In your first package you'll receive an Iron Man and Captain America just as they appear in the Avengers. All subscribers will receive a display stand, rocket raccoon figure, a Marvel metal box and three posters. Each figurine comes with a magazine full of information about the character including their comic book origins and how they were brought to life in the movies. To start your Fan Home Marvel Superheroes and Villains collection now, use the link in the description and promo code BRUTON to get an early bird gift. Right, let's see if this tank track works. I've put all my track segments together, so I'm just going to put some power on that motor and see how it runs. Seems alright on the table, let's try it in a bigger area. So, pretty glad that my sprocket has stayed in the track, so the aligners look like they're working with all of the bearings. But let's see what happens if we drive it and then try and drive round a corner. So I'm just going to put a little bend in it. At the moment this is totally passive. So let's just power that up. So it's okay if we don't bend the track too much basically. Although it tends to drive straighter by itself as we go. So let's bend it round again. Obviously that track will only bend to a certain extent. So yeah, not too unhappy with that. That looks like it's not working too bad. Well, there's a bit of a jam. So let's just straighten that out. The track isn't very tight all the way round. And also in the middle of the bend it's kind of loose and there's no way to tension it so that's something we need to look at. But it does fundamentally work as long as we're on flat ground and basically we fluke it by trying to keep that belt tight. So my track isn't overly tight, it's quite loose in the middle, it could do with tensioning. But worse than that is if I bend it then it gets super loose because there's nothing basically pushing it into that corner. Also, if I pick the whole thing up, the track falls off the bottom, and if you then bend it, it pretty much comes off the aligners completely, because there's really nothing tensioning it and holding it on there as there should be. So, I've upgraded the bars that fit on top and bottom of those bearings in the middle of that gear, and these have got bearings attached all over them. So there's some that the track can roll on to stop it falling down, and two on the sides there that should hopefully hold that track into the bend. I've also fitted some extra guide bearings on the end of that straight section and that's bonded permanently to it just to help support that track as well. So now my track is held up by the guide bearings and it's also held side to side by the other guide bearings. So now as I bend the whole thing that track should stay forced into the bend which should keep the track tight. And that's the same on the top and bottom. It can still just fall off though, either lift off the top or it can of course fall off the bottom if I pick the whole thing up. So to fix that I've got these extra little pieces which are going to screw onto the sides and these are going to hold some extra bars with some extra bearings on. So those fit just there. It's a bit of a nasty solution but basically I've got some bearings on the outside and I'm pulling that track right down to keep it tensioned over the middle section. So now the track doesn't fall off the bottom and it should stay on the top. The track's a bit of a funny shape but it does allow it to bend still so hopefully this is a good solution. I don't really like this solution of keeping the track down because it means the track isn't flat anymore, the driving surface isn't totally flat, but it does hold the track down very well. Ideally what we need is a double layer track so we have some little bearings that 
go into essentially a groove in the flexible track to hold it down and the outside driving surface is smooth. That would probably be a complete rebuild though, so for now we're just going to stick with this and see how well it works. I didn't really think about how I was actually going to drive it, so I've got this linear actuator which is stuck on the outside, which has got more than enough force to push it, so I think that's going to have to be the solution for now. I also didn't think about where I was going to put batteries or any motor drivers, so I've made this controller, which is an Arduino and two motor drivers, on the end of a long lead. So this will do fine just for testing whether this thing has got traction and can climb over things and steers and drives okay. It seems to drive on carpet okay, and that actuator is more than strong enough to overcome the friction so I can dry steer, but of course my tracks are smooth at the moment and they don't have any grippy rubber on or anything like that. So that seems a perfectly adequate actuator and a perfectly adequate drive motor to drive the whole thing along. My track doesn't bend quite as far as I wanted it to and also the actuator doesn't move quite as far as it could if I actually bent the track as far as it would bend. So I can turn round but it takes quite a few multi-point turns to turn the whole thing round and do a 180 and head off in the other direction should I want to. Of course I can drive in both directions, so I only ever actually need to turn 90 degrees. But can it climb over obstacles? Let's try this plastic box lid. So the track itself grips, which is good, and if it were a smooth driving surface throughout the whole length of the tank, then it would probably work fine. But actually we've got really stuck on where those bearings are and where the dips are in the track at the bottom. Let's try some aluminium extrusion which of course has exactly the same problem. And I'm basically stuck on there and the motor is jammed. So yeah, it's just jammed there by that bearing and the bit of plastic that holds it, and I can hardly move the motor. If we try three of those at different spacings, um, yeah, the same thing happens again. So I'm perfectly grounded there on the two little wheels you can see on the bottom, those bearings. Let's put them further apart, surely that'll work. So it looks okay till of course it pulls one of those along the ground and then everything gets stuck again. Yep, still one of those jams in exactly the same place. So other driving surfaces are fine provided there are no big lumps and bumps which is the whole purpose of a tank really. It would be quite good if I actually had some rubber grips on the outside and I thought about sticking rubber feet on all along the way on all of the tracks. But actually we're going to have real problems because of those bars on the outside that are holding the bearings. There's only about 3mm clearance there, so I'm pretty sure that rubber pads stuck on are just going to get jammed under the bar and then the whole thing will jam up and it won't run at all. So that works fairly well for a concept. There's a couple of improvements I'd like to do in a version 2. One of those is getting rid of these bearings on the outside and having a smooth driving surface as I mentioned earlier. And the other one is having more bend and less straight sections. Most of this is actually straight and we've only got this little bendy piece in the middle. If we had two of these joints with these part gears then we could have far more bend, maybe it's a bit longer and we'll just keep those aligners at the end which seem to work perfectly well. But for now I'm going to publish all the CAD and code on my GitHub as I usually do for all my projects. So if you'd like to support me through Patreon or YouTube channel membership then those links are in the description below. And patrons and YouTube channel members can get access to all the videos up to a week early including sneak peeks and pictures of what's coming up. Alright that's all for now.